I'm Wally Wood, and we welcome you to this edition of the Revelation File Report. Thank you for joining us. From the very beginning of this ministry, at the end of the uh, late 60s and early 70s, we've been focused exclusively on the signs of the times of Jesus' return in the last generation. And all the signs that were to take place were to occur in the course of one generation of time. And that has been something I've been doing now for over 50 years. And our primary focus has been, especially on this series of programs, on two primary passages of prophetic scripture. The first one is found in Matthew 24, verses 33 through 34, in which Jesus said, When you see all these things, know that he is near, even at the door. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. This generation being referred to is the generation that would see these things. It would take place in one lifetime, including his return. And that is a very pivotal cornerstone verse to signal what generation it would be. And as you see on your screen right now, we have everything in development now that has been prophesied from ancient times. And it's happening in the lifetime of this one generation. The second cornerstone passage of the prophetic times that were to occur, we find in Luke 21, 36, in which Jesus said, Watch therefore and pray always, that you may be found worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So that last generation would not only witness the unfolding of these one-time events to occur in all of history, which would also include his return, but in their lives they were to show themselves focused on the kingdom with a kingdom focus, a kingdom mindset exclusively for the purpose of being found worthy by him to escape the things that were coming. We were to be so kingdom minded that we are of earthly good. And we're told in that Daniel that those who know their God in those last days would rise up and do great exploits. So there was a generation of power people that was to exist in those last days that would be beyond any generation that existed before in history. And it is our intention to show, because we're convinced that the generation that is alive right now, you and me, we are the generation that will see with our, e our eye the splitting of that eastern sky. And his return is in our lifetime. I'm not setting any dates. I'm just telling you in the span of time these were the events of the last days. So I want to bring focus today on a teaching having to do with thankfulness, even of the small things. Thank you, Lord, for my coffee machine. And I say that every morning. Every time I fix our, my wife's and my coffee, I thank the Lord for our coffee machine. It's a little thing, but it plays in with what Scriptures tells us and reminds us of. In Proverbs 15, 6, in the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. Coffee machines are part of that treasure, and we're to be thankful for it. Proverbs 8, 20 through 21, wisdom says, I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. So he promises, especially to those who love the Lord, treasures, wealth, prosperity. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I don't have to be. The scriptures teach prosperity. I've given you power to make wealth, the Lord said in Deuteronomy. And I inquired of him one time, what did you mean by that, Lord? I know what we mean by wealth. But I have a feeling that your definition is a bit more extensive than ours. What did you mean when you said, I've given you power to make wealth? So he led me on a word study. 
And this is what I found, that his definition of wealth from his perspective is this, that you have the ability to attain and retain his attention. Wow. When you've got the attention of the Creator, He surrounds you with His favor. That's wealth. And every wealthy person out there, he can't buy his health. He might be able to buy things of earth, but he can't buy length of life or health of life. We as believers, we stand on the covenant of what He has accomplished for us and the promises that come with that covenant. That's a wealthy person as far as God's concerned. If you can get my attention and keep my attention, you've got my support, you've got my favor. That is a wealthy person. So we are a, a, a people who are called to being friendly with our Lord. In John 15:15, 15, 15, he says, "No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you." Friends enjoy one another's company. Now let's look at this for a second. By calling us friends, he took us out of the realm of the religious. By removing us from religion, He's placed us in the category, the environment of relationship. And He wants to relate to us on a one-on-one, -on -one, personal, friendly basis. He wants to be closer to us than a brother. And that's what this is all about. When we're thankful for the little things He gives to us, it connects us with Him emotionally psychologically, relationally. That's the kind of relationship he wants. And we're talking about being a people who pray always to be found worthy to escape the things that are coming. He promised in Malachi chapter 3 that I will protect my own as a father protects his son so no harm will come into him. This is the relationship He's wanting to establish with each and every one of us. Friends enjoy one another's company. So, let's have coffee with Jesus. <laughs> let's sit down and have coffee with God. In the picture you're looking at right now, I like the t-shirt to the left, the word coffee. Christ offers forgiveness for everyone, everywhere. That's a very clever graphic. When I was in the world of business, I used to have daily board meetings with the chairman of my board, God Himself. And every morning before I left to go to the office and work with the team, I had a meeting with God for the activities of that day, the plans of that day. I invited Him in to the very day that He invited me into. And we started the day with a uh, board meeting, just the two of us, over coffee. And it made the day run easier. In fact, it got to the point where I put together a journal, which I've shown you before. And in this journal, I've gathered Bible verses pertaining to the operations of business. Every aspect of business that I would find myself involved in, I've got Bible verses for in this journal. And I would carry it into meetings everywhere I went. I didn't take my Bible. Didn't have to. I put my Bible in here. And nobody's threatened by a journal. And yet I always referred to it and looked at it in the meetings that we conducted. I had the National Space and Technology Association for 10 years. And we had breakfasts and lunches and after hour meetings. We had workshops and conventions. These Bible verses were at the foundation of operating the National Space and Technology Association for 10 years. 
So it was nothing for me to include my God as the chairman of the board and take him with me into every meeting that we had. So I learned how to be thankful over a cup of coffee. Thank you for my coffee machine. And to this day, when I fix our coffee, I say those words. I don't want to get out of the habit of being thankful for the little things. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18 reads, Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you. Colossians 4, 2, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Now, referring back to Luke 21, pray always, Jesus said. Colossians, continue steadfastly in prayer. That doesn't mean you spend all day on your knees, but it does mean that throughout your day, you are cognizant of His presence. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in strongly. When you're walking as a friend of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is between the two of you. You're hearing from the Lord, and He's hearing from you by way of the Spirit. You're walking with the Spirit mindset throughout your entire day and everything you do throughout the day. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What is a supplication? Nothing more than just a request. Everything by prayer and request with thanksgiving. This keeps us in a thankful state of mind. It keeps us humble before Him. We don't get this big haughty attitude. We're not self-made people in our own success. We stay dependent upon Him every step of the way. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Be thankful. There's a, over a hundred verses of Scripture having to do with being thankful. God, now, before we leave the screen, I want to bring your attention to something I failed to bring to you before. At the very top of the screen, man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's Malachi 4.4. 4. Every word, I'm sorry, that's Matthew 4.4, 4, that proceeds out of the mouth of God, we live by. That's a lot. And to us, that's just a Bible verse. But to him, it's a barometer. It's a barometer of our heart and our commitment to him. God loves the thankful. By every word that proceeds out of his mouth, we live. Not only does he love the thankful, but he also loves the humble. James 4, 6. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, if you call yourself a Christian, who among us could not use the grace of God shown upon us? He gives that grace to the humble, not the proud. Proverbs 29, 23. He who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. In Nehemiah, the Lord says, I will give honor to those who honor me. Now, I hope this is painting for you the type of personality that He expects from us lifelong so that we may be found worthy to escape the things that are coming. Proverbs 3.34 To the humble He gives favor. It's not to the proud. It's not to the haughty. It's not to the self-made. He gives favor to the humble. Proverbs 25, 9. He gives the humble in what is right. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. 
We live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. This is divine management in our lives. And we are to remain, as, as Paul said, be circumspect. Pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to the word that is guiding you. Walk in it. Learn it. Meditate upon it. Feed upon it. This is how our lives are shaped. By every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Wow. This really does get intense. And it requires prayer and fasting. Remember when Jesus said, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed. And it will be removed. At the end of that passage where he was talking about the, the uh, child with epilepsy, how be it this kind does not go out but by much prayer and fasting. What kind was he talking about? He wasn't talking about the epilepsy. That was taken care of by the stripes on his back. That's a disease, affliction, a sickness. No. You're talking about the type of faith that fills a mustard seed that could move mountains. People ask all the time, how Jesus said that the, that the righteous know his voice. How do we know the voice of God? We've got so many voices going off in our head all the time. Through prayer and fasting, you fine-tune yourself to learn to hear the voice of the Spirit. That comes by way of sacrifice. You are sacrificing your own free time and pursuit of things when you're praying and fasting with Him as your single focus. Seek ye first parentheses, and foremost, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So if you want to hear the voice of God, if you want to know the voice of Christ, pray and fast. That feeds your faith. And your faith becomes strong in the smallest of areas. Being thankful and humble God loves the thankful and the humble. Psalms 100, verse 3 and 4. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His name. Again, folks, I'm not saying be religious. This doesn't mean that you have to conduct a worship service at work. It's ever in your heart. I work in the world of retail. It never stops. It's always busy. But I've trained myself to think in terms and listen to the Holy Spirit, even as I'm checking people out at the register. And I'm ever thankful. I'm always thinking of Him. I'm not perfect, I'm just maturing by His work, His help in me. Proverbs 16, 9. The mind of a person plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. In Psalm 66, we're told, God, you're so sovereign that even the heathen feign obedience to your will. God directs. He orchestrates, he administrates, he manages. He's doing the work. And when our hearts are given to him, it is a better work. And it's a work for our good. The mind of a person plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. You've probably heard me say this before. I'm reminded of the uh, late Walter Cronkite, former CBS news anchorman. Upon his retirement, shortly after his retirement, he had a heart attack and went into the hospital. When he emerged from the hospital, the media was there. Cameras, news reporters, microphones. He came up to the microphones and the cameras. He said, gentlemen, if you ever want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. 
The mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. John 15, 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And you've heard me give this before. My interpretation of that is, apart from me, you can do no thing. That's how we learn to be thankful for the little things for the ongoing things because we know that without him we can do nothing so being thankful for putting fuel in my car every time I put fuel in the car I thank him I thank him for the card that I'm using I thank him for the ability to put fuel in my car and the finances to go with that I thank him for his promised protection every night as we sleep. Thank you, Lord, for covering us under your wings. Thank you for surrounding us with your angels. Thank you that according to your covenant in Psalms 91, no evil will befall our dwelling. Thank you that we are sleeping in peace. Thank you that we are receiving your instructions in our sleep. Thank you. I thank him for daily provision. We go to the grocery stores. We thank him not just for the meal we're having at the table, but we thank him for the groceries we bought. Thank you for providing us those groceries. Thank you. For divine health. Again, the richest people in the world can't buy perfect health. Their money can't buy them good health once they lose it. Thank you, Lord. That I'm no longer in the that I'm not in the hospital, and I remember those days as a child, looking out the window, wishing that I was out there, not in the hospital. So it gives me a baseline in which to be thankful for my good health. And I thank Him for my employment. In today's day and time, when there are so many hundreds of thousands of people out of jobs, I thank Him. I don't have to worry about the status of my ministry, how far it's going to go, whether it's even fulfilling the desires of my heart. I'm no longer ambitious. I died to ambition a long time ago. It's a day-by-day living experience. Thank you, Lord, that you still have me alive. Thank you that you have me employed. Thank you that you have money coming into my account in order to pay my bills. Thank you. And this is where I want to again bring focus to this ministry. The generation that sees these things would not pass away until all have been fulfilled. And that's the generation we are living in right now. And those constitute the Revelation File Report the Revelation Follow teaching series is what you've just had here today. And we bring focus on the fact that we're to pray in such a way, in such a manner, that we may be found worthy to escape. Now, when you read that particular passage in Luke 21, in any other version, you'll read different interpretations of that. Most of them say that you may have the strength to endure or may have the strength to pass through. It's in the King James Version that we read this particular version, that you may be found worthy to escape. I'm not enough of a scholar to know which of the translations is more accurate. But the high ground goes to the King James Version, because in that particular version, I am to live my life in such a way that he's impressed enough to cover me, to protect me. There are many people who want to take that verse and make it into a rapture verse. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not smart enough or scholarly enough to tell. I'll leave that up to those who think they know the answers. I know that in Scripture, he has the ability to hide us in many examples in the Old Testament especially. 
He has the power to hide us from view. So he knows how to protect us. That's his business, his job. Mine is just to live the Christ life like, uh, Christ like life in my life. Another word that he dropped in me here recently that fits this particular message if I am to represent Christ as an ambassador to Christ, I am to resemble Christ. We don't think in those terms. I am to resemble him in all things. 1 John chapter 4. As he is, so are we in this world. 1 John chapter 2. If any man says that he walks in Christ, that he abides in Christ, he ought to walk even as Christ walked. We are to resemble him in our representation of him. That's where a thankful, humble life comes in. Our Lord and Creator, Jesus Christ, was most humble, so much so that He has submitted Himself even to the death of the cross, being the one who created the tree on which He hung. I hope these messages drive home to all of us because we're living in those times. Those who know their God will rise up and do great exploits. And I pray that these messages help you and help to better ground us all in being more circumspect and serious about what He has told us to do and to be in these last days. I appreciate you and I thank you for tuning in. I'm Wally Wood, and we welcome you back at our next program. Thank you so much. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forms in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalidez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time, and be sure to like and share this channel.